It is about money and power. They have nothing to do with advancing education. The kids didn't have a voice at the table. It was all sound bites and lies. They're hiding the answers from parents like me. They would protect teachers they knew were bad teachers. They're sending millions of dollars to left-leaning groups or politicians every year. I felt that I didn't have a voice there. They didn't want to listen to us. There's real problems happening with our kids. They're only working for the union. They're not even working for their teachers. My name is Kali Fontania. I'm a former public school teacher of 15 years and the founder of Exodus Institute. I want America to know how teachers' unions are negatively affecting public education in our country. I was born to be a teacher. I had a lot of success in my classroom. I will still always be a teacher, just not in public education. I personally believe the union never represented me. Our schools are supposed to be politically neutral environments, and that's no longer what they are. America needs to see what's happening in our classrooms and how our teachers are being trained to be racist and how a lot of this is being pushed by the teachers' unions. I know my experience with the teachers' union, but I know there's so much more to the story. I reached out to subject matter experts, parents, and fellow teachers to learn more. And as with any story, we have to start from the beginning. Teachers' unions actually sprung up in the mid-1800s they were kind of just a way to legitimize the role of a teacher and to standardize how you got that career. When you get to the Great Depression, cities or towns were slashing their budgets just to sort of pay for general public works. One of the first things to go was teacher salaries. So, you know, the unions could step in and say, this is what we're fighting for, better pay for teachers, better classroom conditions, right after World War II, and then going into the 50s. We're in the red scare in the country, right? If there was any small suspicion that maybe you were sympathetic to the Communist Party or anything like that, you could be fired. And that's how we got the sort of tenure system that we have today. Uh, it was really born out of this effort to protect teachers from these unjust and unfair firings. Of course, now, when we think about the tenure system, we know it's one of the probably greatest detriments to our public school system. And what is tenure? Tenure basically means that teachers can't get fired for anything, barring some sort of egregious violation. Unfortunately for school children, poor performance is not an egregious violation. Early in my career, I understood how tenure could protect more senior teachers. But I didn't realize that tenure also protected teachers who put in little to no effort. I spoke with John Schilling, who started his career in the Arizona Department of Education to get a better picture of just how far unions will go to protect the worst teachers. Do you think the unions protect teachers that probably shouldn't be in the classroom? Oh, unquestionably. <laughs> I've seen it. I've I mean, the process to even get rid of a teacher that has clearly done something wrong is very laborious. There's no question that the union goes out of the way to protect bad teachers. If a teacher can no longer be in the classroom, they've done something so egregious they can't be around students, but they can't be fired yet, they're in this limbo period. The teachers' unions decided they would send them to these rubber rooms, which was truly just a room where these teachers would go and do nothing all day. And the entire time, they're still getting their full pay and their full benefits. And the rubber rooms are a direct product of teachers' unions. Yes, rubber rooms were fully engineered by teachers' unions. The New Yorker did this huge investigation around rubber rooms and found that the average teacher could be in a rubber room for three years or more. The worst of the worst may end up in rubber rooms, but many subpar teachers stay in the classroom. And even if the teacher across the hall is 10 times more effective, their paychecks could be the same or lower. Over the years, education reform has been pushing for something called merit pay, where we wanted to pay our best teachers more money, and we wanted to be able to reward teachers on how well they were preparing children to move on to the next level. The unions don't like merit pay. It doesn't really make any difference whether you're a really great teacher or, or, or not so good teacher. If you've been there for 30 years, your pay is gonna go up. We really aren't fostering the goodness in some of our teachers. 
were actually holding them back, which is crazy. Yeah, they are just not in the business of wanting to ensure that every child has a quality education or to improve academic outcomes for kids. And they've become, particularly in the last uh, 25 years, very, very political. And with all of their political giving and all of the grants that they hand out, really going you know, to the left side of the aisle. That is not accurately representing their membership because not every teacher has views like that. Some people are accusing teachers unions of being more of a political organization than a teacher's organization. What do you have to say about that? Teachers unions are definitely more of a political organization than an educational organization. You have the National Education Association and the American Federation of Teachers. Both of these unions are political powerhouses. In the last 20 years, the NEA has sent over $200 million to politics. And the AFT, in the same vein, they've sent about $90 million. That's not including some of these left-leaning groups like Planned Parenthood, the Clinton Foundation, that are also getting money every single year from these groups. And teachers unions, where do they get their funding from? All teachers unions are funded by their members' dues, so everything they're sending to politics is coming from their members' pockets, from their hard-earned cash. These are political activities and grants to advance a progressive agenda. They have nothing to do with helping children learn. They have nothing to do with giving children opportunity. They have nothing to do with improving outcomes. And frankly, it doesn't have anything to do with improving teacher pay or benefits. For the teachers' unions, it is about money and power. And we got an honest glimpse into this back in 2009. The top lawyer for the National Education Association for, for decades, he talked about why the union was effective, and he said straight up, It is not because we care about children, and it is not because we have a vision of a great public school for every child. NEA and its affiliates are effective advocates because we have power. It's not because we care about kids. It's because we have power. It's because we have three and a half million members who are giving us hundreds of millions of dollars every year. That's what we are. How are teachers and students affected by the unions and why is this an important issue to be aware of? The teacher unions are the ones that are often making the decisions without the input from a lot of rank and file teachers. Yeah. Because the unions largely control most of the school boards in America. I think one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is the role that teachers unions played over the course of the pandemic. It became clear that the teachers unions had seriously influenced the CDC on school reopening guidance. If you talk to regular rank and file teachers, I'm guessing that most of them wanted to be back in the classroom. It wasn't just teachers who wanted to return to the classroom. Parents were desperate for schools to reopen as well. After months of watching their children struggle, many parents were shocked to realize it was the unions who were keeping schools closed. You experienced being a parent with children that had to stay at home for a long period of time. What was it like as a parent? It was a real disaster from the parent perspective. A lot of kids were struggling. I know that was true in my house. You couldn't just step back and assume that the teachers union was going to push for something that was going to be in the best interest of the kids. The unions were really trying to make uh, a lot of very unreasonable demands in order to go back into the classroom. Uh, things like, you know, we wanted to make sure that every teacher was vaccinated, every student had to be vaccinated. And this was at a time where vaccines hadn't even been approved for children. They wanted a massive infusion of new federal money. The unions were trying to prevent students from leaving their traditional public schools and going into online learning for online charter schools or online private schools. And these are the kinds of things that, again, just had a terribly negative impact on students. Teachers knew students were struggling, but as they waited for schools to reopen, their unions began pressuring school boards to remain closed while they used the pandemic to try to score political points. Our union basically controls about half the school board. And so when the union pushes very, very heavily to keep things closed, then those board members uh, are more than happy to go ahead and push to maintain the status quo of keeping schools closed. Your local union was calling to defund the police. Weren't they leveraging that against opening up the schools? I remember hearing about this in the news. 
They wanted to push for all sorts of social changes and then using the, the cloud of having the teachers not come back in COVID was one of their mechanisms. What were they calling for? I mean, that's... <laughs> the abolition of police. Wow. With schools closed, many parents saw for the first time just how political classrooms have gotten. But when parents began to dig into the curriculum to see what exactly was being taught, the unions became desperate to shut them out. What we see is very scary for our right. children. How did you start getting concerned about the curriculum that was being taught to your five-year-old daughter? My school district sent out a message to the community saying that they had declared my school district to be systemically racist. They were using highly politicized language. But if you go on the NEA website, you'll see that they have Black Lives Matter curriculum, social justice curriculum. They're called a teacher's union, not a student's union. So why are they proposing curriculum for students? There's a lot of uh, information out there that's where people are fighting against critical race theory and they're saying, you're trying to ban history. You're trying to ban the teaching of slavery or the teaching about Jim Crow laws. You know, how would you respond to that? We need to teach the good, the bad, and the ugly. And, and we have been teaching the good, the bad, and the ugly. Critical race theory says that the entire system in America, whether it's the judicial system, bureaucracies, are racist. The teachers' unions want to teach history through a lens of critical race theory that makes it seem like America is not the country that it actually is. We actually live in a country with a judicial system and a government that tries to fight racism. That's mm -hmm. why we have anti-discrimination laws. You are being legally bullied by the teachers' union. Can you share what's happening with that? So the teachers' union is suing me for submitting public records requests about what my kids would be learning in school. Before that happened, actually, my school district, they had a, a full five-hour school board meeting where my school board had people speak against me as if they were witnesses speaking against me at trial. They put all of my public records requests on a big screen as if they were admitting evidence against me. It was a real show trial. And to know that this was me that was on trial was like an out-of-body experience. And they were really just trying to publicly humiliate me in a school board meeting. But then two months later, the NEA, which is the largest teachers union in America, did sue me. Not only are they trying to carve out a new law for themselves to interfere in the public records request process, I think they were primarily trying to bully me, harass me, and send a message to other parents that they will come after them with frivolous litigation if they advocate for their children in the same way that I did. Teachers unions have a lot of power, but it is possible for teachers to fight back my view has always been that the role of a union is to cover wages, hours, and working conditions for the workers, and that all these other social agendas are a distraction from their representing the employees. In the event that you would pose a different view than what was being presented, then you would be browbeaten and intimidated, and some of the union members were verbally abusive to anybody who didn't toe their specific line. What happened when you asked to get out of it and no longer pay dues? What did they do? I explored every option I could to go through the union and to go through the district, and I've been denied at every step of the way. So then I connected with the Freedom Foundation, and then on my behalf, they went ahead and then filed a lawsuit for me. So you basically came out as against the defund the police movement. What do you think should happen to protect our children and to protect our teachers? Step number one is a lot less brushing things under the carpet. What the school district did is so they didn't want to have the school to prison pipeline. So now you could have a kid that could stab somebody, slash somebody, hit somebody with a rock, and they would have no accountability. Do you have hope for the teachers unions? And what do you think needs to change in order for the system to actually get back all of the great things that it was originally for? There's going to have to be an epiphany moment mm -hmm. brought about by the lack of discipline and the lack of safety of both the students and the staff. And people may think, hey, union, maybe we need to go ahead and then focus more on traditional union objectives versus a, a social engineering agenda of eliminating consequences for misbehavior. Parents have also proven that they are a powerful force to counter the teachers' unions. I want to know what other parents can do to join in that fight. So in a sense, you became a community organizer through this. We, we call ourselves accidental activists. <laughs> 
We started providing a lot of advocacy information for parents who are starving for it, how you contact the school board members and what you should ask them and what you can say, because parents felt very helpless in Fairfax County when it came to getting the schools open. It's okay to reach out to your school board member and ask questions and express concern. And I think most parents never knew until they got into the middle of this problem that the kids didn't have a voice at the table. The teachers, you know, has done a really good job in convincing teachers that, that you need them and, and also don't challenge us because, you know, we'll retaliate against you. But if a little bit of organization starts happening around the scenes, I'm hopeful that that tide can turn. They don't know what to do when you fight back. They don't have a plan B, mm -hmm. so fight back. People assume that because a teacher's union supports something that it's actually something that's good for students and good for teachers. And so we need to really spread the word that teachers unions and what's right for teachers and students are very, very separate things. What would you say to someone who doesn't have a child in the educational system right now? Should they be worried about teachers unions? Everybody pays taxes and your taxes are going to pay teachers their salaries mm. and a portion of those salaries are going right to teachers unions. Mm -hmm. So without really thinking about it, you are supporting the very political organizations that teachers unions are sending their members dues to. They're political action committees. They're not pro-education, they're just pro-union. They're only working for the union. They're not even working for their teachers. The teachers unions are failing us. What can we do to fix the system? There have been a lot of reforms over the last 25 years, but unquestionably, the most important of those reforms has been school choice. And I think the more we can empower parents to be able to choose the right educational environment for their child, that's gonna shake up the system. I think if we have more competition in education, we're gonna see more empowered teachers and we're gonna see better and improved educational outcomes for all children. And the biggest reason I think that they are opposed to things like school choice, it's because there's no union dues in that. The average voter, if they heard about school choice, they would be like, wow, this is amazing. I get to choose the school that I want my child to go to. Yet it's so polarized. No, this should be bipartisan. What's going on? Yeah, sadly, it really does boil down to politics. You know, the union money really just goes to one side of the aisle on the left. Uh, and as a result, you find a lot of folks who are sort of reluctant to cross the unions. And that's really unfortunate because when you look at the polling data today, if you were a politician and you saw numbers like this, you would think that you would be rushing to go file bills to expand this. But sadly, uh, that is just not the case. If we really want to empower parents to make choices for their own kids, money must follow children. Our K-12 system, despite 25 years of some pretty significant reforms, uh, remains largely uh, an antiquated 19th century system. In 2022, we got our first glimpse into the damage caused by the teacher union-led shutdowns. More than two decades of growth in math and reading vanished during the shutdowns. Minority and low-income students suffered the most. Now more than ever, we need the best teachers possible to help our students regain ground. We cannot let the unions drive for more money and power destroy another generation. Our future depends on it. Thanks for watching our documentary. The teachers' unions are the biggest bullies in school, but you can stand up against them by standing with us. Sign up for PrEP, PragerU's resources for educators and parents, and take action today.